Hello Info Person, this is Anton and today we're going to be discussing some new exciting discoveries about the universe. And that's because when we look up at the night sky, we obviously see the universe itself, but we see it as billions and billions of stars shining brightly across unimaginable distances. And to many ancient cultures, and of course to our mind, this might appear as something that never changes, something that contains infinite vitality and creation, and endless energy. But today we know that this is not the case, because the universe we inhabit does change with time, and as a matter of fact, it might have been most energetic and most creative billions and billions of years ago, and it's essentially now way past its prime time. Or I guess scientifically speaking, the universe is already entering a very long, very slow decline that's going to eventually transform the universe into a much colder, much darker place. And for many decades, astronomers tried to work out exactly how long this is going to take and exactly when all of this started. And today, based on a lot of different evidence, we think that all of this began 13.8 billion years ago. And it all started with that famous Big Bang. Not really an explosion as much as a very sudden expansion that was extremely rapid at first and involved very hot, very dense plasma that existed for the first 380,000 years. But as it expanded, it also cooled down and eventually transformed into what we know today. And while based on a lot of evidence from many different telescopes, we also know that as the universe matured and as gravity began to pull matter together, eventually it started forming larger and larger cosmic structures and eventually producing all of the stars and clusters we see around us today. But I guess one question we still have trouble answering is, so where exactly are we in this massive timeline? Or I guess just to rephrase this, where exactly is the universe headed and how long does it have? Well, that particular question doesn't have an answer yet, but we now have at least a few more studies that provide us a few more interesting facts, and most importantly, very accurate measurements regarding the average temperature of galaxies a long time ago and the rate at which these galaxies produce stars and cool down. And in short, there is a really important confirmation from many of these studies. The confirmation being that the star formation and the overall heat of the universe peaked a long time ago. And here we're talking about billions and billions of years. And so the galaxies today and all of the stars today can be essentially described as a kind of an afterglow following a very active formation period during the era referred to as the cosmic noon. And so today we're going to dive into some of this new research and some of the new discoveries that essentially combine data from two very powerful space telescopes, the Euclid telescope and the Herschel space mission. With both telescopes helping us answer questions about why the cosmos is cooling down and telling us just a little bit more about the future of the universe. But to understand all of this, we first need to establish exactly what astronomers usually study when they look at a lot of these distant objects and when they try to answer these questions. And the primary focus is very often stardust. Although here it's not just dirt, but cosmic remnants and building blocks coming from ancient stars and ancient nebula. And so following massive supernova that disperse a lot of dust, all of this dust and all of this gas disperses across the galaxy and is also very often enriched in a lot of heavier elements that tell us a little bit more about the parent star. But eventually this dust clumps again and starts collapsing under its own gravity forming next generation of stars. And so here dust is directly linked to star formation and star evolution. But here there's a key relationship. Galaxies that are forming rapidly usually have much hotter dust. And that's because they usually contain most massive and extremely hot young stars actively forming and heating the dust around them. Conversely, the galaxies that are not as active and the galaxies that are cooling off or are slowing down their stellar production tend to have gas that's much cooler overall. And that means that by finding the average temperature of gas in a typical galaxy, it can give scientists a pretty clear view on the galactic energy and the overall star formation. This is actually referred to as the SFR value, star formation rate. And so temperature in the galaxy acts as a kind of a thermometer, telling us exactly how healthy and active a galaxy is. But how exactly do we even get this data from many different galaxies? Well, here a lot of this comes from the international team that combines observations from several telescopes, with these studies focusing on the data from Herschel and Euclid telescopes. And Euclid Telescope is super exciting because this is a very brand new mission. It was only launched in 2023 and it has a very ambitious primary objective 
to create the most accurate three-dimensional map of the universe in order to help us understand things like dark energy, dark matter, and the overall evolution of the entire universe. It's sometimes also referred to as the Dark Matter Telescope. And it does this by observing billions of galaxies, which is then going to use to try to trace the evolution of structures for the past 10 billion years. It does this by gathering a lot of light in the visible and near-infrared spectra and focusing on values like, for example, redshift and galactic motion. But this just tells us about galaxies. What about the temperature? Well, to measure temperature, this is where Herschel Space Observatory comes in. Now, this particular observatory is slightly older. It was actually only active between 2009 and 2013, but it did measure a lot of galaxies at longer wavelengths, specifically the far infrared. And in this case, this is important because hot objects usually radiate strongly in the infrared range, so it allows us to measure heat perfectly. And so in this case, by combining Euclid catalog, which already has 2.6 million objects, with the data from the Herschel telescope, researchers were able to produce the most statistically robust calculation reported in the study right here. And this shows us pretty much everything from the galactic temperature to the overall star formation in each of these galaxies. In terms of visual observations, it kind of looks like this. And so this was a lot of data to work with. This was a very comprehensive data set, and this data set was absolutely necessary in order to make any conclusions about how the universe has been evolving and what's going to be happening in the future. But importantly, these observations are very accurate, especially when it comes to dust temperature. And so what were the results and what conclusions did the scientists come up with? Well, first of all, the analysis once again confirms that the universe had the most intense star formation era approximately 10 billion years ago. And so we are officially living in the aftermath. And that particular era was somewhere right here, 2 to 3 billion years following the Big Bang. And so over the past 10 billion years of cosmic history, the overall temperature of galactic stardust and the overall star formation rate has been gradually slowing down. Although in this case, this research also came up with actual numbers allowing us to compare the values. For example, the average temperature of the earliest galaxies observed, which was roughly around 10 billion years ago, was approximately 35 Kelvin. Now that's pretty cold, it's about minus 238 Celsius, but that's not that cold for the galaxy itself. So 35 Kelvin represents the average temperature in the entire galaxy, including areas where there's practically nothing. And so here there's actually a really intriguing trend. Average dust temperatures have been decreasing by about 10 Kelvin over the last 10 billion years. With this very small but very clear downward trend, hinting that the universe has been slowly becoming colder and way less active. And in fact, the data here even reveals something else about how galaxies produce heat today compared to the early universe. In the past, hotter dust meant faster star formation, driven by a lot of massive, hot, young stars. But in the much more recent universe, even for galaxies that are very far away from us, at a redshift of 1 or existing 7 billion years ago, here the average dust temperature appeared to be converging to about 23 Kelvin, or about 12 degrees colder. And to scientists behind the study, this suggests that the energy source for the dust has dramatically changed. And so, as the star formation decreases, the dust is no longer heated primarily by those intense hot young stars, and instead is now mostly heated by the existing cooler and older stellar population, such as various long-lived stars already in place. Or just to rephrase this, there is a major difference between what heated galaxies long time ago and what seems to heat them today. Before it was these very massive stars that only existed for maybe 1 to 3 million years at max, and would then explode producing enormous supernova. But with time, less and less such stars appeared, and the majority of stars were just kind of similar to our sun. Which means that the galaxies went through a major transition in the last 10 billion years. A transition that seems to confirm that the universe is aging and is transforming from being very active and very hot to barely active and much colder than before. But a lot of these findings were not just about dust, they were also about fundamental understanding of the evolution of the universe and of course its ultimate fate. Because in this case the decline in star formation rate or this SFR value kind of confirms that the overall matter dominated era is potentially being replaced by the dark energy dominated era that will result in the universe cooling down even more as it's being expanded faster and faster. And that's despite the fact that for the first few billions of years the entire universe was actually dominated by matter. And it was actually during this time that the universe was able to build a lot of really massive structures including various galactic clusters and the mysterious cosmic web and gave the universe and everything in it the shape it has today. 
But a few billion years ago, or approximately 9.8 billion years following the Big Bang, there was some kind of a strange shift. The expansion of space started to accelerate once again. And it's this acceleration that's currently very mysterious and is what we usually refer to as dark energy. It's basically some kind of a phenomenon that's causing the universe to expand faster and faster and that we don't really understand yet. But the data from these telescopes seems to fit everything perfectly. So for example, 4.8 to 5 billion years ago, when the universe started to expand faster and faster, matter has become more and more dispersed, with galaxies becoming cut off from the gas supply and thus becoming colder, which resulted in less star production and star activity with a lot more galaxies today being completely quenched or basically silent and not even producing that many stars, compared to those first 3 billion years when a lot of galaxies were active and produced most of the stars in the entire universe. And so according to the scientists behind the study, from now on the universe will most likely just get colder and colder, with most of the star formation and most of the galactic activity eventually disappearing. Or at least that's the overall prediction and conclusion from some of these recent studies. But I guess the question here is, okay, so why exactly would that matter? Well, these precise measurements do provide us with very important insights into the overall evolution of the entire universe. By measuring temperatures in various galaxies far away and much closer to us, they help us confirm the accuracy of various cosmological models, help us confirm the ideas behind how the universe transformed in the last 13.8 billion years, and of course confirm various timelines since the beginning of the Big Bang itself. On top of this, as the Euclid mission continues, a lot of these accurate measurements are going to be absolutely important for trying to understand exactly why the universe is expanding, so this is the idea known as the dark energy, and also trying to understand if there are maybe some anomalies or something we don't understand about gravity itself. But I guess more importantly, so far all of this data and all of these interpretations were only based on a very very small area from the initial release. As of making of this video, Euclid has actually observed approximately 30 times more stuff with its eventual goal being mapping approximately one third of the whole night skies. And so as the mission progresses and as we gather more data, scientists expect to discover even more and possibly provide answers to some of these mysteries or at least confirm some of the propositions from the modern cosmology. Although here we're still left with this ultimate question. So what's at the end? In the very very long term, What's the fate of the universe? Well, some of the studies we've discussed recently propose that maybe the universe is actually going to reverse its course and then collapse into a tiny point once again. But based on these observations right now, it looks like the universe is just going to continuously cool down and eventually reach the point known as the heat death. Or possibly even expand so fast that it might rip itself apart in the phenomenon referred to as the Big Rip. There should be a video in the description talking about this a little bit more. And so the actual end of the universe is still unclear, but what's clear is that these findings provide us with undeniable evidence that the universe was at its most active during the cosmic noon when the galaxies were much hotter and the stars were forming much much faster. And we're now basically living through the end times. We're part of the aging cosmos whose youthful star formation has been replaced by much calmer older stars like our sun. But we'll definitely come back and discuss this more in some of the future videos because this is just a super fascinating topic. A topic that doesn't really have an exact answer yet. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon where you can find additional videos, videos without any ads and can DM me directly, or by joining a channel membership that grants you early access. You can also buy the wonderful person t-shirt in the description below. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.